Hey there, everybody. Sam Dunn. Blaine Smith. And welcome to the uh, Overkill Reviews edition of uh, the best metal albums of 2022. Yes, this is the Banger staff picking their favorite records of 2022. It's been an interesting year. I mean, there's been, there's definitely been some ups. There's definitely been some downs. Uh, I had fun hanging out with y'all on Twitch over this year. And I got to go to my first concert back uh, at the start of the year since COVID. I saw Ultra Tom, the great Quebec death metal band, a previous album of the year pick for me uh, over at Seascapes in Toronto. It was a great show. It was the perfect show back. Uh, so that, that was a nice way to sort of kick the year back into normal. How you doing? Sam. I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's been kind of a weird year for me, metal-wise. Obviously, yeah, not going to a ton of shows, but way back in the spring, took my boy Rory to see Mastodon for the first time, which was uh, a big highlight of the year for us. But yeah, I would agree. Ups and downs. Uh, don't want to blow the lead here. Not a ton of releases that really got me super excited. Uh, this year, I think a lot coming next year that I'm pretty amped up about, but there were some really strong records, I think, from some unexpected uh, corners of the metal world, for sure. As always, a big thanks to our supporters over on Patreon. We do have a Patreon campaign. You can support us, give us some money to make content like this. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff happening in the new year over there, so keep an eye peeled for that. And one of those new things, Mr. Dunn. You have entered the world of podcasting. That's right. The world needed another podcast, so uh, I stepped up to the plate. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you're heading over to our Patreon. The Sam's podcast will be going up exclusively over there. And yeah, you you, you all want to hear Sam talk more. Well, now you have a regular date to hear Sam stories. Yeah, I'm not sure the world needed another podcast, to be honest. But hey, I couldn't resist. I'm in the mix now, and the podcast is called... Caught in a Rant, which I credit you, fine friend, for coming up with that really sweet and pithy title. Yeah, it's, it's fun, you know, just talking about my metal past a bit, gonna talk to some old friends from my metal days back on the island out west, and also gonna be eventually having some uh, big name guests on the show, talk about where metal's been, where it is, where it's going. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Enough jibber-jabber though, let's get to what people are here for. This is our personal picks for Album of the Year. We'll be giving you them, we'll also be giving a couple of little honorable shout-outs. And without further ado, I know you're here to see the man himself talk about his Album of the Year, so Sam, take away. So, yeah, I got a few honorable mentions, and uh, I gotta say, I loved the new Goat Whore record, Angels Hung from the Arches of heaven. I literally had to memorize that title uh, in order to say it on camera. And the title track particularly, I thought was super, super strong. What to say? I mean, love these guys. I've loved them for a long, long time. One of my favorite vocalists in metal. And I like the fact that particularly on that title track and some of the other songs on the record, they seem to be kind of uh, you know, branching out a little bit, a little more breathing room in the music. Uh, it's not all super, super riff dense metal, uh, which of course I love too. But I think uh, Goat Horror is is evolving in a in a very tasteful way. So uh, love that record. But here's my favorite album of the year. My favorite album of 2022 was Hath. Uh, all that was promised. <laughs> Gotta say, didn't really know much about these guys. This guy said, hey Sam, why don't you check out this album called Half? And I was like, sure Blaine, uh, no, sure Blaine, I'll check it out. Um, fantastic record. Uh, it, for me, it taps into that early bloodbath uh, sound. So many great ideas on this album. I mean, normally I like my metal a little more riffy, a little more like, oh, here's a riff that I'm gonna be walking down the street the next day, running through my, my noggin. This was a bit more experiential. It's more atmospheric, but still super, super uh, brutal. Love 
the vocals on this album. Uh, I think the vocals are super, super strong. Love the production. Could talk about the production all day. Beautiful sound on all the instruments, particularly the drums, and we can hear the bass, which is obviously <laughs> the most important thing. Um, but yeah, I just loved, um, I loved the Hath record. Can't wait for the next thing that they do. And, you know, I'm just excited that my favorite album of the year was by a band that I had literally not heard of prior to you saying, check out this album. So shout out to Blaine, shout out to Hath. Great job. Can't wait for the next one. Well, thank you, Sam, for those records and that thoroughly offensive impression of me. Uh, as per usual, I have uh, my runners-up presented in the form of uh, uh, award titles that uh, really, really, really usually blunt the fact that I'm saying something really nice about the record because I sound like a moron. Uh, so, up first, uh, the merch band of the year with music that absolutely lives up to the quality of the merch for once. Uh, normally when a band has merch this amazing, they've spent more time in the merch booth than they have in the recording booth, but luckily, uh, Undeath. Whoa, <laughs> shorts. <laughs> crushing the merch game, crushing the album game. Uh, really excited. They got a show in Toronto as well, so gonna see them live and just couldn't be happier. Thanks, Undeath. Thanks for the beach towel. My second award is the best fist in album of the year. I, I mean, I know how that sounds, but but it, the, the Eliminator, best fist in record of the year. Let's go. And as per usual, my Hooded Menace album of the year award goes to, uh, they released it in November, so I don't have merch from them yet, but uh, Jade, uh, I'm waiting on those patches, but the Jade record that I just talked about in Metal Monthly is still uh, in the ears, in the play log. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Hooded Menace didn't release an album this year, and Jade absolutely filled that spot in my heart. And my album of the year award, also known as the Ask and Thou Shalt Receive award goes to, dun, 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 no surprise to anyone, Black Braid. Uh, so forever uh, I've been asking, hey, why don't we get some more diverse folk influences in black metal? I'm really tired of just Western European folk in my black metal and the floodgates seemingly have opened uh, and we're getting a lot more stuff especially this year but Black Braid's Black Braid 1 without a question uh, absolutely fantastic record uh, really delivered on everything everybody wanted uh, he's blowing up it's blowing up and couldn't be more deserved love to see it uh, and just still absolutely love that record uh, such a breath of fresh air in the black metal world which has really been getting a fantastic show shake up with so many different things coming into a genre that everybody for a period was like, well, every single record here sounds exactly the same. Yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. Yep. So those are our picks. Uh, and of course, we also love hearing from the whole team over here. So up first, we've got resident metalcore expert Brad bringing us what I'm going to assume is a metalcore record. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Bradley Zordrager here, perplexed about the fact that it's the end of the year and I have to pick an album of the year for Banger TV when I'm still wearing this pumpkin ass of sulfur hoodie. It was just Halloween. Now it's almost Christmas. What the hell's going on? What even came out this year? So I looked and apparently this is the same year that we had that crazy ass deathcore day with like Fit for an Autopsy, Shadow of Intent, Enterprise Earth, and Worm Shepherd. And I'm like, how is that the same year? So looked what came out. And for those of you who have seen my Lorna Shore review, it may come as no surprise that I was considering naming that my album of the year, but then I heard Sam Astaroth got it, so I gotta do the review. I'll let him have that. So I'm gonna go to another recently released album, same label, Century Media, Spirit World, and their album, Death Western. I don't remember the last time, if ever, that I've heard a sound so perfectly encapsulated in a title that's, you know, a made up sub, 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 sub genre that somehow fits perfectly. Yeah, these guys are like some metallic hardcore in the vein of integrity with some serious Slayer worship, but they come at it from like the, the Western point of view. And I don't mean the West, like the Western world. I mean like the Wild West, you know, like there's occasional like saloon ass music in there and there's, 
you know, this overarching story that is presented in these amazing videos. Now, Stu Folsom has this great vision for this project that I'm so excited for. The visuals are great. The story is great. He's released a book. It's just an all-encompassing world that transports you both in, you know, time and place and I'd say sound, but the sound is kind of just timeless metal, hardcore, hardcore infused metal. No, metal infused, hardcore infused metal. Kind of like the same kind of wow that you get when you first heard uh, Power Trip. These guys have the serious crossover potential and I can't wait for this band to just evolve into this massive multimedia project that really shows off Stu's entire vision. This stuff is really cool. The riffs are awesome. Plenty of dive bombs. I hope on the next record they do a dive bomb and try to approximate like the panicked neigh of a horse and just kind of like meld those together in whatever daw they're using to make it a uh, real cowboy shit. I mean, it is real cowboy shit. More cowboy shit than I am. And you should check it out. Yeehaw. Yeehaw hardcore. Yeah. All right. Have a good year. Wait. Hope you had a good year. That was cool. Yeah, Brad, great pick. We Man, love Brad's pick. I mean, pick. no offense, Brad, but I think it's the first one I've liked. <laughs> yeah, but not the last. We know that for sure. Uh, Spirit World, haven't even listened to that record. There's so many releases, so little time. Uh, 365 days. Um, that sounds really good. Yeah. I like the riffs uh, that I'm hearing, uh, the tone on the guitar. Super cool. You mentioned Power Trip. It's a little bit of old school Swedish death metal vibe in, in there as as well with the kind of more hardcore vocals. I liked it. I yeah. got I gotta listen to this record. Yeah, it's a great record. And the the, the little the little western touches are nice. It's just that little spice that kind of really takes a record from uh, from being like, wow, this is just a good staple to listen to that like this is something unique and special. So uh, you know, Spirit World, I love a complete package and they really delivered mm. a complete package with the album. And they're from Vegas, so you're just kind of like, what? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next up, we're going to hear from the, the real rock star in the, in the banger team. No offense to either of us. Uh, this is uh, Daniel DK with his picks for 2022. Banger fans, Daniel DK here with my pick. First things first, I kept EPs off of the list. Sorry, Warthog and Fugitive, maybe next year. Uh, but other thing, I don't do favorites. I don't pick favorites. I can't pick one. So I picked 15, and I'm going to tell you about all of them. But first, as a technicality, if I have to go number one, we will go Goat Whore, Angels Hung from the Arches of Heaven. <laughs> It's Goat Whore, it's Black and Thrash, and there's shitloads of Satan. What is there not to love? That is the key to my heart all the time. But you guys already know what Goat Whore sounds like, so I'm gonna take the rest of my time to tell you about 14 other records. You have to promise me you're gonna check them out. Let's go. Midnight, Let There Be Witchery. You already know what it sounds like, it slaps. Riot City, Electric Elite. Trad Metal out of Canada, some of the best. Evil Invader, Shattering Reflection. Big time Wasp vibes on this album. It's perhaps their best and most experimental to date. Summerlands, Dream Killer. We all knew this record was gonna be perfect. I did not expect it to go even further than the Aussie Ultimate Sin Worship though. Some of the best Stratocaster metal in the game right now. High Command, Eclipse of the Dual Moons. If you like swords, if you like thrash, this is for you. Revocation, Nether Heaven. As if Dave Davidson could get any better at technical guitar and songwriting. It's mind blowing. Comeback Kid, Heavy Steps. Heavy indeed, perhaps their heaviest I've ever heard them put out. Hooky choruses, still intact. Crank it up. Morbicon of Mournful Twilight. It's black and roll, it's black metal, it's thrashy, it's got Euro atmospheric vibes, it's got the rhythm section from Municipal Waste. What more do you need? Traitor, exiled to the surface. If you like German thrash, this is the Teutonic Warship you're looking for. Ace Phallix, Theothanatology. If you think that Left Hand Path and Altars of Madness are the greatest death metal records of all time, then boy, are you in for a treat. Phobophilic, enveloping absurdity, 
If you miss old Tomb Mold, this is the record for you. Early Moods, self-titled album. It's like Early Sabbath and Deep Purple. It's fucking fantastic straight out of Los Angeles. Armory, Mercurion, we gotta have some speed metal on the list, don't we? And Mind Force, New Lords, because would a DK list really be complete without any crossover on it? All right, that's my list. 15 albums, listen to all of them. Jesus, did DK get bit by a radioactive Sarah? Did you really list two EPs and 15 records? I mean, you did it in under two minutes, which was the brief, so I can't criticize that much. Yeah. Yeah. We need to get some jazz into DK's <laughs> diet. Uh, man, what a machine that uh, that guy is. Great pick, as you already know, one of my honorable mentions for 2022, the new Gold Hoer record with the impossibly long title that I can never remember. What can I say? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, can't wait to have one of those dudes on my podcast, actually. Never really had the chance to talk to them, and I've been listening to them for like 10 plus years. So, good pick, DK. Same page. Well, from one weedman to the next, uh, we're heading from DK to our resident stoner doom expert and newest addition to the Banger team. Uh, Connor, take it away. Oh, how's it going, Banger TV? It's me, Connor here, giving you my contribution for Album of the Year 2022 edition. Uh, I can't believe we've come this far, man. We have so many killer records that come out this year, especially these two fuzzed and buzzed records behind me, and especially this one. This one actually features Daniel DK, our very own. Uh, you guys got to sip that up. It would be too biased if I picked that for my album of the year. I'm not going to do that. Uh, my album of the year is Mephistopheles and their fourth record, Violent Theater. <laughs> Violent Theater, it is nothing like their first three records. Their first three records, in my opinion, is total electric wizard worship. And a lot of people would say that. A lot of their earlier songs sound like electric wizard songs. Their newest one, Violent Theater, it is nothing like that at all. For sure, it has the same like guitar tones, bass tones, uh, the same style drumming, but the songs in general, they've totally gone a different direction, which is great. For sure, it's slow, it's sleazy, it's doom, it's stoner rock, but it's not this whole Electric Wizard worship band like all the other bands in the scene. It's not that. This is their strongest. And my favorite song on this record is The Meaning of All Evil. That song, as soon as you start that, oh my goodness. I thought it was Paul Chain. So, see you later, Electric Wizard. We are now worshiping the all-time great Italian doom, doom legend, Paul Chain. Uh, I, I think this is, you know, something that everyone in the whole stoner doom psych scene needs to listen to. It did come out a bit later this year, I think maybe a month or two ago. So uh, the vinyl, we're all waiting for the vinyl. I wish I could show it. It's not here. Uh, but I highly suggest you guys checking that out. It has everything that you know and love about Mephistopheles, still the same sleaze, still the same rock and roll, crunchy bass. Like, I love it. And I think all of you dudes would love it as well. Dudes and dudettes. Uh, please check it out. Uh, check out these amazing Fuzz and Buzz records here behind me. Like I said, this one, Witch Rot Live in the Hammer, features our very own Daniel DK. Uh, you'd be foolish not to listen to that. Hear him slow down. Mm, that's it right there. Boogie on, rock and roll, you guys know what to do. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, what year is it? Uh, did Rob Zombie <laughs> have babies with Monster Magnet and Caius in 2022? Uh, not really my thing, don't really know the album, but yeah, kind of cool, I get the vibe. Uh, but yeah, not really my thing, but hey, there's, there's room for it all. And hey, yes, much respect to Connor for mentioning, but not picking uh, albums from his own label for his album of the year. <laughs> very, very good self-control. <laughs> all right, well, next is our resident Finnish woodswoman, who I understand just bought a house way over there in the, uh, Nordic uh, lands. Congratulations, Sarah. Hope you're well. I haven't seen you in a ton of time, but yeah, here's Sarah Kay with her rundown. Hey everybody, it is Sarah, and I'm about to do a roulette version of my favorite albums of 2022, so let's get going. The first album I want to talk about, Circlin', Swedish epic heavy metal band, Sounds Like Bathory, A Song to Sorrow, Kills. My favorite EP, hands down this year, Bergfried, Romantic, Epic heavy metal with a female vocalist who has the highest, sweetest, most beautiful voice. This is one of the most beautiful releases I've ever heard. Reminds me of Blue Oyster Cult. 
New album by German epic deemsters Lord Vigo, We Shall Overcome. Amazing follow-up to their previous album, which was their Blade Runner-esque masterpiece. This one is faster. It's more heavy metal. It's less epic doom. After that, I love this album by Riders of Rohan. It's called Riders of Rohan. Um, it's adventure rock. It's kind of like Hallis and kind of like Uriah Heep, but there's dueling uh, female and male vocals, and it's just got this very unusual style and vibe. Plus, there's a killer kiss cover. After that, oh, Vital Spirit, amazing spaghetti western black metal that is from Canada. Oh, I cannot stop playing this cassette. It is amazing. Also loving the debut EP by Finnish band Emissary. Yes, these dudes have been in Smolder, are in my band Smolder. I don't care. This is amazing speed metal thrash USPM with like unhinged manic energy. Also loving new album by Negative Plane weird weird black metal the debut by Sonia. it's like if ghost never got shitty the second studio album by iron griffin epic heavy metal but now with way more dungeon synth oh the debut ep by moonlight sorcery amazing 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 finished black metal i cannot wait to hear what this band does next and finally Maybe my number one album of 2022, Lucifer. This album's great. Free yourself from my unshackles. Enjoy the rest of your year. Listen to heavy metal, support the underground. Well, Sarah showing some restraint this year. Uh, a, a fair number of picks from her, but uh, definitely toned down. And I'm really glad she picked Lucifer as her album of the year because uh, I was having trouble deciding between Eliminator and Lucifer. So, uh, hey, we got both of them in here. So we nailed it. Sweet. That was cool, uh, Lou Zerver. I love the video, I love the palette, love the red, love the graphics, uh, super cool, really creative. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's very Sarah. Very Sarah. Very Sarah, love the wows and the ahs. Um, <laughs> those, are all, those are all sweet, old school stuff, like it. Right. All right, we freed ourselves from Iron Shackles. I've been saying that all year long, too. Hey. Uh, and, uh, and now to check in with uh, Prog Master Dylan. How's it going, Banger TV fans? Dylan Gowan here. Well, it's that time of year again where I make my pick for album of the year. And it was really tough to just pick one record because there was a ton of great progressive metal albums that came out this year, like the new Meshuggah record, Animals as Leaders, Devon Townsend, Coating Cambria, An Abstract Illusion, Oceans of Slumber, uh, Warforged, Grey Lotus. So it was really tough to just pick one record. And, but I managed to get it down to one. And my album of the year pick is going to be Epigon by Wilderun. This is such a fantastic album and I highly recommend it to anybody who's a fan of progressive metal. So where do I begin with Epigon? Well, first and foremost, the songwriting on this album is absolutely top-notch. It's fantastic, and I love that Rilled Run on this record took a lot of risks by adding in some new elements to their songwriting, and it just made it really stand out amongst all the other progressive metal releases this year. I love the fact that they throw in a lot of atmospheric elements, as well as having this huge cinematic moments that happen throughout the whole entire record to give these songs such a great dramatic lift. Love the folk instrumentation that they threw in and how a lot of these songs can be chaotic and really intense one moment and calm the next. And all of those different ideas and elements and just having this big plethora of various musical ideas and tones and moods and melodies, it just shows that this is just such a fantastic album and I get the same amount of joy listening to this album for the hundredth time like I did the first time I listened to it. There's just so much to unpack with this record and it feels like I discover something new every time I listen to Epigon. So if you are a fan of progressive metal, this is mandatory listening. You have to check out this album. 
and I can't recommend Wilderun enough, and I just see that this band is going to be a headline act within the next couple years, and the fact that they're getting a lot of recognition for this album is well-deserved because these guys are fantastic songwriters, and they're just going to get better with every release. So my album of the year pick is Wilderun with their fourth studio album, Epigon, and I can't wait to talk about some more prog in 2023. So until then, guys, cheers, take care, happy holidays, and see you next year. Well, yeah, you know you're looking at uh, Dylan's top album of the year when the opening lyrics are, there's a river. <laughs> uh, Wilder Run. Uh, pretty cool. Not familiar with this record. Brought me, being the old guy in the room, uh, brought me right back to early Opeth, uh, the time, you know, right at that point when they were sort of mingling with both sides of, of the, the Opeth equation, light and, and dark. And yeah, a few luthiers made some cash on yeah. that, that album too. Some acoustic action, like the overhand <laughs> technique on, on, on one of them there. But uh, yeah, a lot of, hey, the nature worship is just gets bigger and bigger in, in, in metal, not, not opposed. But yeah, not bad. It's all it's all Opeth to me. Yeah, I mean, I was I was happy we got a Dylan album with some harsh vocals. It's like it's like we've been we've been bullying everybody for the picks every single year that we've done this, and they're like, maybe let's not get bullied as much this year. <laughs> <laughs> bullying works, is what I'm saying. <laughs> all right, well, enough with the flora and the fauna. Uh, let's go to Riley. Riley, you're up. What's up everyone? Riley here. Let's talk about my album of the year for 2022, except I couldn't just pick one. So we're going to talk about my top three. So first and foremost, I have Uzlaga with The Might of Waves. This album came out in July. It's very raw, very noisy black metal from Bristol, UK. If you like albums where the production kind of sounds like it's already been through a bumblebee's arsehole, then you're going to be into it. Um, it's got some really, really catchy melodies. It's very energetic, but then that vibe is just absolutely annihilated by these swells of sound and they pick it up and just crash it the fuck down on the most jagged of rocks. It's just sick. Really brutal, really sick. Second up, I have Ortigort with Demo. It's their first demo and it's simply just called Demo. This also came out in May. Um, it is so fun. It is blackened punk from Belgium. So it's got those really fast, really crusty elements, except it also has all of the black and nihilism you could probably ever ask for. They're really into the whole end of humanity thing, and I kind of think that's fun. So if you like music where it's got like delinquent punk energy, but you just want it to be a little bit more evil, this is the album for you. Make sure to check it out. And last, but certainly not least, I have Vital Spirit with Still as the Night and Cold as the Wind. This came out in May. This is a black metal duo from Vancouver. Both members are also in the band Wormwitch, if you're familiar with them. They just give you so much here. There's notions of folk and twang, and it's oriented into <laughs> a feelings of desperation and strain. You've got these really classic black metal riffs that sort of dance around and whisper around these twisted fiddles. It's like Clint Eastwood meets the bottom of the blackest, darkest, most enchanted pool you could ever imagine. And I just think that that's beautiful. The first song... I heard was called Blood and Smoke, and the outro has this really funky, like, 60s style Americana vibe with, like, a trumpet and the castanets. It's just so cool. They took so much inspiration from so many different places and were able to successfully articulate them into the perfect spots in this album. And I don't really know any other black metal bands that sound like this. So if you stick out to me, you're on it. Amazing album. I listen to it now in my day-to-day -day life ever since it came out and that doesn't happen very often so definitely make sure to check it out and that's all i got those are my top three albums of 2022 i hope you like them i think they're friggin great well, I'm always going to be happy with a black metal pick, and we know Wormwitch are buddies. Uh, you know, I've had a member not 
a member of Wormwitch that's in this band, but Colby from Wormwitch, uh, you know, we had a little chat on the Twitch stream about Crust, so happy to be supporting the Vancouver Wormwitch boys, no matter which of the boys it is, so uh, love the Vital Spirit record, and yeah. Again, like that video, I, I'm really like, Super impressed with the creativity on a lot of these more underground releases. I love the sepia tone kind of plays into my documentary nerd <laughs> side of me with all the all the archival footage. Really liked it. Not familiar with the record, but always nice to see some black metal coming from my old coast out there on the west side of the country. So very cool, Vital Spirit. And closing things out, let's see what Sam Astaroth picked for his album of the year 2022. Hey there, my friends. Here are some of my favorite albums of 2022. This year, I really enjoyed albums like the Russian Witch House group Ice Picks Kiss of Death, which features artists like Krim Dracula, Grimes, and Ollie Sykes from Bring Me the Horizon. It's super diverse. I also enjoyed the genre bending group Horrors album Skin, which goes all over the place as well and has features from Corey Taylor, Bun B, as well as Josiah. Also, also, I'm not sure what to do with my hands. I've been playing. The joint funk album from Cornhell and Scarlord titled Psycho on Repeat. The last song features a song with Corpse Heights Bend and you have to listen to it. So, all that aside, if I had to strictly pick a metal album as my favorite album of the year, I would have to go with Lorna Shore's Pain Remains, which came out on October 14th via Century Media Records. Wormos' vocals are simply phenomenal. He's an absolute monster with an insane vocal control finesse on his multiple range and style-based delivery with superb precision. He's one of a kind. Counting in at 61 minutes, this album is a total banger. The lead single, Sun Eater, is super catchy and memorable. Songs like Curse to Die hit you straight in the gut. Soulless Existence gives you an almost ballad type feel and Pain Remains 1, 2, and 3 end the album off in an epic fashion. Brutal, heavy, melodic, innovative, this is not your typical deathcore album. The riffs are catchy, the rhythm section has tons of creative riffage, and obviously the breakdowns are as brutal as ever. This is complemented by intense drumming and all of this is overlaid with beautiful orchestration which gives feels in between Demo Borgia and Dark Tranquility at times. An absolute must listen for album of this year. Ah, uh, well, I don't think it's busy enough. <laughs> more notes. We need more notes, Lorna Shore. Uh, wow, that's some uh, dense shit right there. Super heavy, super duper cookie monster in the vocal uh, department. But hey, very Sam A. Yep. Not surprised. Yep, thanks for picking a metal album this year. <laughs> Our metal channel it was nice of you. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that that wraps things up for our album of the years. Fun. Yeah. Heard some stuff I hadn't heard. Going to go into the, uh, the 2022 vaults. Spirit World, especially. I'm on the case. Uh, thanks for watching. That was ours, but of course we love hearing what your albums of the year are. So uh, keep an eye on the channel because we've got the rundown of the top 10 banger viewers album of the year choices. And this one, I'm at, I'm pretty happy about this video actually. Uh, the, your top 10 list, pretty yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, so thanks again for watching. That was fun. It's always fun taking the piss out of the banger team and ourselves a little bit along the way. Thanks.